Well, today in the Boiling Point, we're going to be talking about deaerators as well as condensate systems. Now, we have done a video on deaerators. Steven Taylor did one. Make sure you check that one out. Before we get started, though, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and always subscribe but, uh, to the YouTube channel. But there is a notification bell on there. If you click that, you will be notified of all the different videos, steam cultures, boiling points, weekly boiler tips, and get tons of information. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about the difference between the DA and the condensate system on the boiling point. Welcome to The Boiling Point, I'm Richie Ware, and this guy you saw a while back as he did a, uh, a video on blowdown separator, which was Sir. awesome. I thought we'd get this guy going again, and we want to talk about condensate tanks as well as a deaerator. So really more uh, feed water, right, a feed water yes, tanks, but there are two different types. Mm -hmm. And so I want to just talk a little bit about the two different types and, and just let you run. Sure. So uh, what we've got here is a full-on deaerator. Um, a lot of times you'll hear people abbreviate it and just call it a DA. Um, over there is a small condensate tank or a preheated feed water system. Sometimes they'll even call it an atmospheric uh, feed water system. Um, but basically both of these are performing two functions. Uh, one, we are trying to preheat water. And the second that we're trying to do is actually drive excess oxygen out of that water. So you might think, I've got a boiler. Why do I need something else to go with it? Right. Um, I don't know if you've ever taken a really hot pan and thrown it in water, but it typically warps and then it wobbles on the stove. Uh -huh. And so metal warps when you throw cold water against hot metal. Boilers are no different. And actually it's a lot more amplified than that. When you throw so much heat in a boiler and then you throw cold water in there, you can warp it. In this case, you can pull tubes out, you can warp the tube sheet, you can do a lot of damage. So we need to preheat that water before we send it into the boiler so that it will actually be warm enough that when it goes in there, it doesn't allow that kind of thermal uh, shock to occur. Yeah. Um, what, also, are the, what are the temperatures real quick? Sure, there? yeah, so on a deaerator, typically you're gonna operate them at a minimum of five pounds uh, or PSI. Okay. And so those will actually operate around 227 degrees or more. Okay. Um, on a condensate tank, you're gonna be looking at more 180 degrees and above. Okay. Um, okay. Usually you won't run them too much higher than that because you could cavitate your pumps, but that goes into pump design and all of that can be avoided later. Right, so you've mm -hmm. got the higher temperature, you've got the pressure. Yep. Why? Okay, so it goes into a little bit of how these actually work. So a deaerator is a lot more complex. Basically with a deaerator, what you're gonna do is you've got a pressurized system and inside we are mechanically scrubbing the water. We are heating things up with steam. So we're running steam back from the boiler, sipping a little bit of that off. We're putting the steam in the, inside this uh, deaerator tank and we're going to be using it in a number of mechanical ways to heat up the water. Basically, you're making a, ba a bath of vapor and you're putting water droplets into that vapor to heat it up. Mm -hmm. And so there's a couple different designs. Some will actually spray water through little jets into the steam vapor. Mm -hmm. Some of them blast it against uh, baffles. Some of them even have trays that cascade the water down these trays and break them out into smaller droplets. But one way or another, you're heating up the water a lot more like that. Mm -hmm. um, whereas with a small condensate tank or preheated pre -heat feed water system, you're actually going to be just running a sparge tube in the bottom. It's okay. basically a pipe that has a whole bunch of little holes in it. Uh -huh. We're running steam through there, blasting the steam up under the water and heating it up that way. Uh -huh. And somehow we're, uh, we're also using a little bit of that mechanical force of that driving steam up to get a little bit of the oxygen out. So okay. that's the second part of it. We're heating it up and we're trying to drive as much oxygen out as we can. But no pressure in Correct. the tank. Correct, they are completely the vented, seat. atmospheric. You don't have any pressure on them. They're okay. completely open. Okay. Um, one thing that we do see too with these is that when we go through and we start, you know, going through and driving up the temperature and driving out all that oxygen, um, we're protecting the boiler from oxygen pitting. That's the reason we want that oxygen out of there. We don't yeah. want oxygen pitting on our steel and the more oxygen you can get out, the better. These deaerators, they get a lot more oxygen out of the water, whereas the condensate tanks, they get some out, but they're not quite as efficient. They're yeah. just not as, they're a lot simpler, they're not as complex, and they don't do as good a job of getting all of that oxygen okay, out. Okay, so oxygen is supposed to come out. So yeah. now, what do you do here if you're not getting it all out? 
usually you're going to have to add a little bit more chemical treatment to your system. Okay. Um, typically what you'll do is you'll use an oxygen scavenging agent, some kind of chemical, whether it's a, uh, a sulfite or something along those means, to actually try to get more of that oxygen out of there. Mm -hmm. You'll still have to use that with a deaerator. You can't avoid your chemical treatment just because you've got this, but this helps get even more out of it and it'll keep your, your units healthier for a lot longer time. Right. Um, the boiler will last a lot longer. Um, the main difference in these applications, usually we won't see these atmospheric feed water systems unless it's a relatively small boiler. Okay. Typically under 300 horsepower is kind of a general rule of thumb, but usually when it's less than that, that's where we'll see those smaller, um, less critical applications. Um, but usually if you're going to have a bigger boiler, if you're going to be running at a higher pressure, if you're going to be running the boiler really hard, a deaerator is really going to be a better solution for you. Sure. Um, we do see that those atmospheric systems, uh, those preheated feed water systems are a lot cheaper. Yeah. Um, they're not going to cost near as much as a deaerator system. Um, and also they won't have as many things to worry about as far as maintenance. They mm -hmm. don't have as many parts to fail and they don't need inspections as regularly as far as required state inspections. Yeah. Most DAs you've got to go ahead and inspect every couple years. Uh, some states even require that you do a mag particle test of the metal strength every so often. Right. So if you've got a small boiler and you don't have those kind of concerns and don't really want to go through and make that kind of expense, maybe a cheaper option would be better. Yeah, yeah. Now Alex is in our rental department and mm -hmm. uh, pretty much in the rental department, you guys choose de mm -hmm. for every uh, trailer and the sizes and everything, correct? Yep, for all of our large boilers, a de yeah. is the way to go. It's, yeah. it's had a lot more success, it protects our boilers better, and overall you also get some efficiency gains by putting higher temperature water into the boiler. Mm -hmm. We get to keep a little bit more efficiency and do better for our customers. Awesome, well appreciate it, great information. Thanks no for hanging out with us and we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.